Okay, welcome to the ZBrush part. In this part, we'll be finalizing our high poly, and we'll be using a technique that is around for a while. And basically, I'm going to show you how to com combine uh, 3ds Max Pro Boolean with ZBrush's Dynamesh to make quick high polys for your future project. Um, it's really the technique I'm about to show is really good for mechanical stuff or whether you want to um, just quickly block something out, a quick concept or um, just hard surface stuff in general. So I will import our mesh real quick right here and then you hit edit. First I shift dragged it out and now I press edit. Uh, now I encourage you to play around with the materials or the matte caps that ZBrush has. There are some really nice ones. Um, I personally like to work with this white one, but there are a lot of nice ones uh, to work with. Mm, like Framer, I use this to like prototype my curvature map or something. Uh, yeah, it's it's really cool. So let's just uh, move on. So basically, why are we here? Um, well, essentially, I will show you how to turn this hard edge into a soft edge like we have on the other pieces, uh, while also making like smooth transitions between these objects, because at the moment, as you can see, it's like very a very hard edge that looks unnatural so what we need to do is we need to go to geometry go to dynamesh and in this case this resolution is appropriate and i want to put the blur to zero now i want to dynamesh now it will take its time i forgot something really important i forgot to split it by groups because now it's split the way I have it in 3ds Max this is one object now let's just go back to Dynamesh and this is how it looks when di when it's Dynameshed it doesn't really look good if you look at it right now But if you now go under uh, deformation and you push the polish slider, as you can see, we get this nice soft transition between the objects and the hard edge is completely soft now. And that looks really good because as you can see, we have really nice soft transitions between the object and now it looks really natural in a sense. I'll just give it two more polish. Well, maybe one more polish is enough. Okay, and we need to do the same for this piece. So I'm going to use 248 resolution. And polish it quite a bit. That looks decent. As you can see, we had really, really bad topology that would never work when we would have applied Turbo Smooth. But with ZBrush Dynamesh, we can make really nice looking transitions easily. And finally, this piece here, and it's the same drill. Put the resolution up, blur to zero, and hit Dynamesh, and now go back to deformation. I want to make this quite smooth, so five for now. I want to make it even more smooth. Two more or three more, yeah, that looks fine to me now. Well, basically, that's that concludes our high poly. Um, 
I'm really happy how it's how it turned out. And we'll be doing the damages and other stuff inside Substance Painter. Okay, so I have hidden all the parts I don't want to export. So I don't want to export the trigger and I just clicked on the eye icon. Basically, I want to export these two, these three guys. So once I have only these visible, I will just hit merge visible. And double click on that here. And now I will hit export. And I will just name it Dynamashed underscore score and that's it so I will see you back in 3ds max okay back in 3ds max first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of this here so I will hit unfreeze all and then just select it and hit the delete key and I also want to get rid of this body now because we are gonna import the high poly finally so just navigate to your height as well as this i'm sorry this here and this here and now just navigate to your files where we have the dynamish export exported stuff and just import it Okay, so I have the Dynamesh version imported and I want to give it the same black material so it fits in nicely here as well and here as well and yeah, it's, it's, it looks really nice I mean, it, it looks wobbly a bit but from far away it's barely noticeable and uh, here as well really clean so two things I want to actually finish all this off here as well and I want to just make these bolts here real quickly and I'm not gonna waste too much time on that so Just take a sphere, sides to eight or segments to eight, move it out here, scale it up, flip, shift track to duplicate it. Now here, I want to delete these guys here, because now I have perfect quads everywhere, as you can hopefully see. And now I hit bridge, and now I will select the borders and just shift drag, or shift scale. Just move it down to here. Scale it down actually a bit more. To about here. Then I want to scale this out. Here, hit chamfer. Add another loop here and then here and here. Maybe one more. Now it turbo smooth. 
and give it the material like that. That looks good. But I think it's too extreme. The indent is too extreme. So just scale it like that. And check it out again. It looks good. So just move it back to here. And hit symmetry here. Okay. And make sure to crank the segments up to two now and everything. Okay, we're almost done here now. Uh, I'm just gonna use spheres here. 64 sided or 84 sided spheres. And just gonna drag them out. And before I forget, also need to do this here, these little cylinders here. Almost forgot about them. So, cylinder, I think we can just use 12 here. Go to top viewport. I'm wondering if taper is gonna work. Yeah, it works. <clears throat> so taper modifier is really nice because we can use curve and like it's still not not destructive. Like as you can see, I can still tweak the tweak the height and whatnot the segments and I have taper on top and I can tweak stuff here. It's really nice. So here I can start tweaking what needs to be tweaked. Okay, now edit poly. And now we're finally finished. Thing looks pretty decent. And I will, again, the next video is going to be about the low poly, then the UVs, baking, and then finally texturing, and then rendering inside Marmoset. 
and that will hopefully conclude the video or the tutorial so thank you for watching so far and i will see you in the next video